I'm Hillary DeMillo. I am here in the Family Resource Center at Arkansas Children's Hospital. And I'm joined today by Dr. Jose Ramiro, who is our Chief of Infectious Disease. Uh, and he is gonna help us distill a little bit of information about something that I think is really on top of parents' minds right now, which is acute flaccid myelitis. Um, so talk to me a little bit about why this disease is kind of puzzling to families right now and, and really what it is. Sure, thank you for, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, so um, acute flaccid myelitis is uh, a, a disease or a syndrome which causes weakness in one or more of the extremities of the arm or the leg. It can actually involve the respiratory muscles or muscles of the face. Um, we're not sure what actually causes it. It has been associated with a group of viruses called enteroviruses, and there's a hundred of these. Um, it's been associated with some that are what are called enterovirus 68, but other cases have been associated with other enteroviruses. And um, in some cases, we don't find any virus at all. So it's puzzling to the CDC, and we're trying to keep uh, track of these cases across the country. They're asking us to report all cases that we think might be AFM to the CDC for their re review. And so far in Arkansas, I think we've had five cases, is that right? Five cases this year. We've this seen, year? We, yes, uh, this year. Uh, we have seen uh, cases previous to this, but this has been sort of a cluster, we would call it, of, of cases since uh, May or so. And I know that the, the paralytic symptoms kind of get some of the attention, but are there other symptoms as well? Uh, there's there's a what we call a prodromal uh, series of, of symptoms. These are signs or symptoms that come on just before the paralysis or the weakness. Um, and it's usually a cold-like syndrome. Okay. So you have runny nose or sore throat or cough. Um, some kids have uh, some diarrhea, um, but then you start with the weakness, and the weakness can actually progress to full paralysis of the limb or limbs, and including uh, paralysis of some of the cranial nerves, the nerves that innervate uh, the ability to sleep, to uh, sorry, swallow, um, and uh, make make noises and things like that. So, what is the the first symptom where parents should really begin to worry and think about? What is their next step in, in seeking medical treatment? Yeah, I, it, it, it's weakness or, or the okay. inability to use the arm or the leg fully. Um, and the children will tell you that. I mean, I can't you know, lift my arm or right. I can't move my leg. Those are signs that you really want to take them to the emergency room or to your personal physician to be seen at that time. Okay, so emergency room or personal physician? Yes. Okay, great. Um, talk to me a little bit about what parents, uh, how worried they should be. I mean, I think this is, it's kind of gotten a lot of uh, headlines because of sure. the idea of polio-like, which is a very scary sounding phrase. Right. Talk to me a little bit about the context. Yeah, so let me give you some numbers so that this falls in there. So if, if we look at from August of 2014 to now, there's been about 395 cases reported to the CDC. If you look at that across the total population of the United States, the CDC says uh, it's less, your chances of getting this are less than one in one million. Mm -hmm. So I, I, you know, you have a better chance of winning the lottery than probably getting this. But right. so, so it's not very common. There are many more diseases that are out there that we can prevent that are more of a risk to your child than, than acute flaccid myelitis. And let's say that, that you do notice the symptoms and you do go to an emergency provider. Um, tell me what's going to happen there. Yeah. So more than likely the child will be hospitalized. Um, this is something that you don't want to wait for that to get worse. And you don't know how bad the disease is going to be or the syndrome is mm -hmm. going to be in the child. So the child will more than likely be admitted. Uh, he, he or she may require a lumbar puncture. Definitely they would do special imaging studies like MRIs of the brain and spinal cord. And that's really where you can see the, the, the changes. Um, it, radiologically or by MRI you can see certain changes that are very specific to this disease. And then the spinal tap can sometimes show you uh, evidence of inflammation in the spine. Okay. Is, has there been noticed any seasonality to this disease? Yeah, um, that's a very, very good question. So the enteroviruses tend to occur during the summer. And we see most of right. these during the, 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 the early summer and fall. I think people think about it as a camp kind of thing where it goes around. It, it can be that for the enterovirus, right. yes. Um, but, but these have occurred also outside of that period of time. So again, it doesn't quite fit for enteroviruses, but mm -hmm. like I said, there are a number of other viruses that can cause this. So 
West Nile virus, for example, can cause paralysis. Uh, there are a number of other viruses that can also cause paralysis. Okay. So talk to me a little bit in, about in context of the flu. Mm -hmm. The flu is kind of the thing that I think we, we yeah. do a lot of talking about this time of year about getting a flu shot. Uh, you're, you're more likely to con contract the flu than AFM, right? Many, many, many times more likely. I mean, okay. and, and that's something for parents to keep in mind, right? The flu, y you have a very, very good chance of coming down with the flu during the flu season. That is a preventable disease. We have vaccines that work against that. And we also have treatment for the flu. So that if you do, if your child does come down with the flu and is of the right age, then they may need to be treated for it. But everybody this time of year should be getting their flu shot. I, you know, everybody in my section already has their mm -hmm. flu shots. Kids that come into my clinic that I'm seeing for one condition, we offer the flu vaccine, influenza vaccine, and then recommend it. Okay, so talk to me a little bit about how we could possibly prevent. I know that we, we don't know it's the precise right. manner, but but what are the right things to be doing to prevent AFM? And are yeah. they similar to what you would do to prevent the flu? Yeah, I, so since we don't know exactly what's causing it, you know, we can just simply give you some general guidelines, and that is hand hygiene, right? Wash your hands before you put them in your mouth. You know, if, if, uh, if somebody has a cold, cough into your arm or cough into a, a tissue, then wash your hands. If you want to stay away from those types of, uh, of uh, respiratory infections, again, not every respiratory infection is going to cause AFM. More respiratory infections are going to be associated with flu flu or other viruses that are also around this time of year. Okay. But Have you gotten any other questions from parents that I haven't thought of that maybe we might want to address on IFM? Um, I, there, there have been some rumors circulating that this is related to vaccines. It has nothing to do with vaccines. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. This is not due to any vaccines we administer to children. And I think it's important to, for parents to realize that vaccines are the best way to prevent these diseases from uh, happening to your child. They're, they aren't the cause of acute flaccid myelitis. Absolutely. Uh, so we'll definitely go ahead and, and second that call for vaccines. Uh, for children is really the number one way that you can protect your children from preventable illness. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jose Romero, for joining me today and for discussing this for a little bit with us and, and also kind of calming some parents' fears and helping them to understand the, the issue a little more. Thank you. Thank you.